I hope you're having a great day. So yes, welcome back to Mental Rubik's Cube. So yes, so today we are actually talking about one of my favorite things, which is peace. <laughs> Um, I try to be a very peaceful person. I don't always accomplish this, however, which is unfortunate, but is what it is. Um, <laughs> but we all try. Um, but no, you know, I think we all kind of strive for peace in our lives. We try to strive for peace with others and just peace overall. I mean, one of the biggest things that we all want, you know, if we could just have one wish, you know, it would be for world peace and then the end of hunger and then no more wars, and there's a lot of stuff that we want. But anyway, it's not about what we want. <laughs> it's about what we can do. And I think that one of the biggest things that we can do is be peacemakers. And I actually want to read you what the definition of a peacemaker is, because I really liked this definition. I was actually shocked when I looked it up that I would get such a beautifully put definition. So it says... A peacemaker is a person who brings about peace, especially by reconciling adversaries. Now, we all know that the devil is called our adversary. It's very hard to try to rally people around this one concept of being peaceful, because our nature, it's inherent. We want to sin. We want to do bad things. We want to hurt people, especially whenever we don't get our own way. And so, we're called to be peacemakers. We're called to, you know, have peace. <laughs> Um, I actually really like this little thing. It was summed up. Uh, I forget what website I got it off of, but if I find it, I'll link it down below for you guys. Well, hopefully. YouTube has not been wanting to include my links here lately for some reason, so trust me, I'm getting that checked out, working on it. Trust me, I know. If I say I'm going to put a link down there, it should be down there, right? Right. Alright, well, I'm trying. <laughs> Praise Jesus, I'm trying. <laughs> but anyway. Alright, so this is summed up very beautifully in my opinion. So it says, a peacemaker is someone who experiences the peace of God because he is at peace with the God of peace through the Prince of Peace, who indeed is our peace, and who therefore seeks to live at peace with others and proclaims the gospel of peace so that others might have joy and peace in believing. And this is exactly, is exactly what we are called to do as Christians. We are supposed to be bringing this message of peace and saving grace to all of these nations and all of these people. And, you know, I feel like that even applies in our lives, even if we're not going out there and just specifically sharing the gospel with people like missionaries and others do. You know, even just in your day-to-day -day life, maybe, you know, you get in a fight with your younger brother, you know, and instead of making it all about yourself and how you want the toy or you want to be able to do this, you know, you bring about peace and just say, hey, well, you can play with it this time or whatever, you know, or if you're stuck in traffic and you're on your way to work and there is some idiot on the road and you just want to roll down your window and cuss them out. You know, try to think peaceful thoughts. Try to think, you know, I know it's so cliche, but what would Jesus do? I mean, I know it sounds like the most cliche thing in the world, but honestly, that's what we're called to do, cliche or not. I mean, if are we not trying to seek to be like him? Isn't that kind of the point? So, I mean, what would he do in that situation? And, oh my goodness, it's hard. Believe you, me. There are plenty of people that I want to do a lot of very bad things to, but we're called to turn the other cheek. We're called to be peaceful. And, you know, it's really not that hard. When you think about all that God has done for you, following these couple simple little rules of being peaceful and, you know, doing unto others as you would have them do unto you and worshiping the Lord and all those things really don't seem that hard whenever you really give yourself over. It's an amazing thing. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then, you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 6-7 The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. May the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Romans 16, 20 I am leaving you with a gift, 
peace of mind and heart, and the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. John 14, 27. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Romans 12, 18. And now may God, who gives us his peace, be with you all. Amen. Romans 15, 33. I was actually shocked at just how much God has to say about peace. But, you know, I'm really thankful that he has so much to say about it. Because it seemed like for so long I was searching for this unattainable peace. I mean, just look at my, my curtain back there. I'm always striving for peace. I hate controversy. I hate conflict. I don't, you know, I don't like fighting with people. I just want everyone to be peaceful. I just, you know, want to have good, light-hearted, spirited conversations with people. And they always want to debate with me. But that's a whole other story for a whole other day. <laughs> Until we actually go back to what God has to say about peace, we're never going to know peace. If we continue to try to find inner peace, it's the equivalent of putting a band-aid on a gash. But just like the scripture said, you know, back in uh, back in John 14, 27, I'll put it back up here on the screen for you. I am leaving you with a gift. Peace of mind. So peace of mind. And peace of heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. It cannot. So don't be troubled or afraid. Don't worry or fret or get anxious about all these things. But practice peace. God says 365 times in the Bible to not fear, to not be afraid. Fear and, you know, anxiety and all of those things, they all wrap up into one big thing. And if we just take all of those things, that fear, that worry, that sorrow, that hurt, that all that stuff, and we just ball it up and we give it to God and we get rid of it and we don't, we don't have it anymore. Then, then we'll know peace. But until then, no. And I speak from experience. I speak from a person who, <laughs> I feel like I have read every single self-help, self-promoting, self-awareness, self-stuff. <laughs> Becoming one with yourself. Opening your magical third eye. It's not about you finding peace for yourself. Because if it was that easy, then everybody would be doing it. Right? Right. So, like I've said before, you gotta step outside of yourself. You gotta think about other people. And you can't be peaceful by yourself. It is a very, very hard thing. It's very hard. <laughs> very hard. But... When we look to somebody else for the strength to have that peace, to not get so angry at the people on the highway, and to not want to start confrontation with the little brother, you know, over the toy. When we just be at peace and, and long to love each other and to share with one another and to help each other grow, that's when you know peace. Some of the most peaceful people I know are some of the most giving people. They give their time, they give money, they give, you know, um, resources, all kinds of stuff. And those are the people that are truly at peace with themselves. But when we have the mindset that we've been saved from being damned to hell, and that God calls us to be peaceful because we have no reason to be revengeful, spiteful, continuously angry, none. We have momentary lapses of frustration and that's understandable because we're human and we're fallen. But God calls us to not be angry and to not have confrontation, but to rather have peace and harmony and love. And that's what we do. I liked that other verse, um, for God is not a God of disorder, but of peace, as in all the meetings of God's holy people. And this is so very true. When you're in the midst of true believers, 
it was one of the most peaceful places to be. And I actually, I went to church uh, today. I'm recording this on Sunday. You guys are watching on Monday. But, um, you know, I went to church today, and I, I was so at peace. I just loved being there. And one of the things that um, the pastor's wife said as we were walking in the door was, can't you feel that? And uh, it was just me and one other lady that she was talking to. And the other lady said, yes, absolutely. And I was kind of um, confused at first. I was like, I, the AC? Like, I know it was hot outside, but I don't think it was that hot. Um, but she said, the Holy Spirit is so powerful that whenever you just walk in the door, you can feel it. And then I understood what she was talking about. And the Holy Spirit is the one that brings us that inner peace. It's God transforming our heart to not, you know, be so spiteful and vengeful and just irritable by all the things of the world, but rather to find peace and to be calm and to just be still and know that He's got this because we can't do it. <laughs> we just can't. All right, well, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this episode all about peace and just good stuff. Anyway, all right, well, I love you guys so much. And as always, keep learning, expand your mind, be safe, don't be afraid, and do no harm. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you back here on Monday for a new Mental Rubik's Cube. Mwah. I was actually shocked at just how my... Ah, serious. <clears throat> this is... Oh, no.